welcome back friends this is solomon jagwe so i'm just taking this opportunity to share some motion capture editing tips i'm just gonna go through and uh, walk you through so today the first tip that i'm gonna be sharing is how to create like perfectly looped animation using some motion capture data that you may have recorded using your uh, maybe accents uh, or maybe a perception neuron or a coco, whichever, wherever you have that data that is not looped, but you wanted to make it loop like a perfect loop. Maybe you want to use it for a YouTube short or maybe a Facebook reel, Instagram reel, but using a 3D animation data. This is motion capture. Okay, so let me connect some a few things right here. All right, so first step is to find your motion capture data. Uh, wherever it is. So in this case, I have this uh, perception neuron uh, guitar playing data, but there's a clip at the beginning that I wanted to use. So I'm just going to double click on this clip. And so I can apply it onto the character that I have here. Now, this is a dummy character. And it's, uh, it's depending on how long your motion capture data is, it might take a little bit of time. But in this case, I suggest I'm just going to give it a chance to fill out <laughs> the timeline. And so let's give me a second. All right. So the animation data is now on the character. And if I expand the timeline over here, you can see the length of the animation. So I'm going to click on fit to window. That will show me the range of how long this uh, take is, right? So sometimes if the mockup data is much longer than your timeline, you can always uh, adjust the number of frames. So let's test like maybe 10,000 frames, press enter. And then if I drag this bar down here, you can see that now I have way more data than I actually thought I had, right? So that gives you an idea of how long the animation is. And let's go ahead and uh, fit to the window over here so it could actually be that you will have more need more frames over there so if i like scrub on the timeline over here you can see the character over there in 3d playing guitar right but if what i'm interested in is at the beginning right so for example over here i have this part where the character claps this is really like a, a clapper when you're making a film that you use. So I want to loop that part and then it goes back maybe in a standing pause. So we'll take it from around here. So we're going to trim that. So I'll put that as the starting point and then clap, clap, clap. and maybe like right there. So you're gonna see how uh, it's gonna work. So we just stop like right here. We're gonna be able to loop this, wait for it. So I'll go ahead and put as, that as the end point and then select the mockup file and trim it. Again, depending on the speed of your computer, uh, this might take a little bit of time, but let's go ahead and delete the end and I can press the plus sign on the keyboard to exp uh, just expand the timeline a little bit more. So this is the animation that we have, right? And we want it to start around here. So I'll go ahead and trim this here and go ahead and delete that part. So now we have a beginning part over here and an ending part where the character is clapping. So in order to make this loopable, like to make a perfect loop, Really, all you got to do is find a space, like maybe a point where the character is still clapping and trim it right here. We're just going to go ahead and trim. So this now is the beginning and this is the, the end. So I can now drag this and this is in iClone. So I move this over here, bring this, this part that was, these are the two matching parts. I want to bring it to the end over here. And now I want to drag this and then push it into each other so they can blend. 
So now if I like drag in between this, you can see that I've created like a blend. But as you can see, there's a part where it's transitioning from pressing the screen and then clapping, right? Now, the way you test to see if this is actually looping is you wanna uh, go to the end of this and let's go ahead and zoom in until you get to like that final. And now it's kind of snapping. So now I know if I do the end point, it's gonna be like right there, right? Now I can zoom out again. Uh, press the minus sign to zoom out. And we can drag this bar over here. And so we wanna make the this the starting point over here. And we're gonna turn on loop here like that. So when I play back, this, remember these two parts were together, but now if I play back, Pa, pa, pa. now it's looping. So that's a quick way of uh, making a looping animation so that it's like seamless. And what is really neat is that you can still blend these pieces together so that the transition is a little bit more. So after they press the, because that was me pressing the button on the iPhone. So instead of going all the way down, I want to start clapping, right? And you can even drag it a little bit even more to create that blend like that so that it goes like so if i go back again to the end and by the tip uh the tip is zoom in as close as possible press the end and then you can zoom out again by pressing the minus key on the keyboard and now if we play back boom clap 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 press clap, 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 press. So that's how you're gonna get like a beginning frame that matches the end frame because we're able to split this animation into two parts, right? Now, what is really amazing is that because this is what, uh, these are two clips, I can actually select all of them, right click, and we wanna merge these clips, like so. So now we have one full clip, that's blended nicely. And the cool thing is that now we can even stre uh, stretch this to be either faster or slower. Let's rewind and play back. Cool. All right. And what's really neat, again, I keep saying neat, but <laughs> what's really amazing is that uh, with iClone, any character that is in iClone uh, can take on this animation, right? Let me give you an example. I'll go up to the top here and I'm gonna load one of the characters that I made. Like actually, let's see, sci-fi. Let's go back a little bit up. Let's try this collection over here. So I'm gonna try this character right here. Double click on him. and wait for, so as long as the character is rigged to have the character creator for Skeleton, it's gonna be able to take on the animation. So now when I play back, <laughs> although he's like firing right there. <laughs> but any character that you use inside of iClone that has the character creator Skeleton, you'll be able to make it loop. Right, so that's what's really, really neat about uh, iClone is that you can create looped animation that works on any character. So you can even save this animation and repurpose it and apply it to another character, or you can just uh, keep loading other characters. So for example, let's try this guy right here. Let's double click on him. And so he's also now, he has the same animation. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> pa, 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 yeah. So then if you're happy with the loop, 
you can then go in and start fixing some things like, for example, here we have an issue with the thumb, right? So what I'm, I always do is I make sure if I'm gonna edit the thumb, I go to the very beginning of the animation. So it will be right here. And I bring up the animation tab and edit motion layer. And by the way, this is really neat. So I re right now I'm using the newest uh, Icon version 8.33, and they've finally fixed the ability to scale this window. It was so, <laughs> I, I don't know. I really was hoping that they would fix that and they did. All right, so here we go. So let's go in to the thumb. What I recommend is always edit the thumb at the beginning of the animation. So we're gonna go in and fix the thumb, which is on the right hand right there. And the good thing is that when you click on one of the parts of the hand, it focuses in on that. So here we have an issue with the thumb. So we can make sure that we are in local mode right here before we rotate. So then I move this, rotate it a little bit like so, a little bit and always rotate around so you can see if you fix the issue. And so we need to fix a little bit more like right there and maybe rotate this way. All right, and we're gonna fix the other fingers as well. So we go to this one right here, the middle, uh, the middle finger, and we can rotate it a little bit. We can also rotate it this way and go to this one, rotate it this way a tiny bit and fix that, straighten that a tiny bit also that one let's fix this too and we can fix this as well so if you wanted to clap with a little the hands a little bit like curled you can always do that so we can rotate this get this and we need to go back over here just a tiny bit all right, already you can see an improvement on the thumb. So you do the same thing for the other hand and it's preferable to do it on the same keyframe. So we can fix that. And the more time you put in, of course, the better the results are going to be. Right now we're just trying to do a quick mock-up editing clean up. Definitely need to rotate this a tiny bit because you want a straight finger. And the cool thing is that you can also select all of them using the control key as you're clicking and you can bend them a little bit like that. So when we get out of that now, we have a better looking hand. And there you do. <laughs> so that's a quick tip on how to edit mockup instead of iClone and also to be able to create a looping animation that then you can use in a game. So if you want to create like an idle or, you know, like a, a running cycle, that's how you'd uh, go through the, that's the process, at least that's the tip that I suggest to be able to create a looped version such so this end keyframe matches the beginning part so that when the playback is turned on or even when you've applied it to the uh, animation inside of Unreal Engine or Unity uh, that you have a looping animation, right? So like I said, again, the more time you put into this, the better the result is gonna be. But I just thought that this would, uh, uh, offer you like a nice tip on how to quickly do that. And you can imagine this didn't even take me a whole day to 
fix this, but at least uh, we're able to improve the animation. And like I said before, this works on any character that is inside of Icron. So let's go through and let's press J to come back to character. You have to focus. And let's go to, maybe let's try Kevin. Okay, so Kevin works. <laughs> so the same animation that we used on the other character is also working on that. So that's what's really neat about this program is that you can use it on any character that you've rigged properly and applied. So let's try this big make warrior and see if it actually works. And this one is, was made in the studio. I was able to import it inside of here. <laughs> it looks massive. But anyway, let's go ahead and play. So you can see the loop still works for that, right? So anyway, thank you so much guys for joining me. I just wanted to take a moment uh, just to give you a behind the scenes of how I edit motion capture inside of Icron. Uh, I used to work, add it inside of motion builder but i think once i encounter once i started using icon i've been using this ever since <laughs> it makes it so much easier and i'm able to, to work in real time and whenever i'm animating i always switch to quick mode high is when you are ready to do the rendering i read the so it will load the highest texture quality but in this case i want to animate so i always do quick mode right so in as much as they've updated this right you can also use the workspace for animation if you click on that and it will just focus on just the animation tools needed over here so you get more tools like the layer animation layer over here the keys the motion curve and all that but when you're done you can always switch back to the standard and with the standard you still have the ability to be able to scale in and out yeah so that is really what I wanted to share today. And I'm hoping to do more and more of uh, these sessions so you get a sense of uh, what it's like behind the scenes to animate a character and be able to still see the textures. Uh, I mean, it looks almost awesome. <laughs> I love those 3D models because they are really, really well textured and they work really well inside of uh, Icron. Uh, so this was converted using Character Creator 4. I imported it inside of from Dar Studio to this. I was able to use it and I've actually created a quick clip that I rendered inside of the Unreal Engine. So that's what's up. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much again for joining me. Uh, if you're watching this in the future or uh, after the stream, I just wanted to point out that this was uh, recorded live. So I'm going to try to do more of these. Uh, so, so that the, I, as we build a community, you guys, if you have questions, you can always ask me, leave a comment in the, the the video under in the comment section or you can always join me live so we can actually chat about art and animation and filmmaking thank you so much for everyone that has uh joined uh, my art page and facebook here and for those who have subscribed i truly appreciate your time and when you get a chance or as give you a chance to go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel because uh, i do some more tutorials on that side thank you so much guys and bye for now